something I couldn't deny myself all last week? Is my self-denial increasing today than it did last year? Can I forgo? Can I give up? Can I abandon? Can I give up something today that I couldn't give up two years ago? Perfecting self-denial in the fear of the Lord. And that means you're improving. That means you're increasing. That means you're growing. Because you're perfecting holiness, perfecting humility. You're perfecting holiness, perfecting obedience. You're perfecting holiness, perfecting love. You're perfecting integrity, perfecting holiness. Perfecting holiness, you're perfecting new nature. Perfecting holiness, you're perfecting the endurance. Perfecting holiness, you're perfecting submission. Perfecting holiness, you're perfecting self-denial. You're increasing more and more. And by the grace of God, you'll shine more and more until the perfect day in Jesus' name. I need a good amen from headquarters church. Amen. And because you see, when you perfect it, you're increasing in it, and then you'll be shining brighter and brighter. Job chapter 17, verse 9. Job chapter 17. We're looking at verse 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. I think that is you. I say that is you. They will shine brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. We come to point number three. Point number three, continual condemnation for not fearing God the Most High. Not fearing God the Most High. You see the judgment that came upon the people that didn't fear God. And because they did not fear God, it says judgment came upon them in First Samuel chapter 12. First Samuel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 25 and from verse 14 and 15. First Samuel chapter 12. Reading from verse 14. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. We will fear the Lord. The hand of the Lord will not be against us will enjoy the promises and the blessings of God in Jesus' name. Second Kings chapter 17. Second Kings chapter 17 verse 25. Second Kings 17, 25. And it was so at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. They feared not the Lord. They, these people living in the earth the Lord has made and living in the place the Lord had given them free and then they were living and moving and increasing in number and yet they will not fear the Lord it says they feared not the Lord therefore the Lord sent lions among them which slew some of them the Lord sent lions among them, which lose some of them. Maybe somebody there is saying, ah, olden days, lions, laying people, destroying people. Then you say, not today. Let's look at First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, we're looking at verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The people that do not fear the Lord, that's their Lord. Because in those Old Testament times, the literal lion came and slew them. But today, it is the devil. It is Satan. It is that drowning lion. And it says he's going about seeking whom he may devour. And the people that do not have the fear of the Lord, the Lord will not protect them. They will be devoured by that lion. We're looking at Psalm 36, reading from verse 1. Psalm 36, verse 1. It says in verse 36, verse 1, the transgression of the wicked saith, within my heart there is no fear of God before his eyes. No fear of God before his eyes. What's the consequence of that? Verse 12, there are the workers of iniquity falling. They are cast down 
and shall not be able to rise. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 1. What do you mean from verse 29? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They hated knowledge. They hated teaching. They hated doctrine. They hated the commandments of the word of the Lord. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would, not, they would none of my counsel. They departed, they, depart, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruits of their own of their own way and be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You see what came upon Nebuchadnezzar? That strange punishment that came upon him. It was because at that time he did not fear the God of heaven. Sinners in the gentle world were not excused from the responsibility of fearing God. God demanded that he, the creator, the preserver of man, be honored and feared and obeyed. Lack of fear and regard for him was always punished. Blasphemy and pride were always visited with divine wrath. Nebuchadnezzar's punishment lasted for seven years, but you understand that the punishment of Belshazzar continues throughout eternity. It's unending, it's everlasting. Kings and princes, great men and great women, atheists and philosophers, and mighty men, wealthy men who sin against God, neither fearing God nor regarding man will bear their guilt, their sorrow, their shame, their suffering for all eternity. While in health, while in wealth, they harden themselves against God and they live in sin without any form of fear. They fear not the God of heaven in whose hands is, is their breath. Many of them may learn too late that their destiny is in God's hand. But we are learning it today and this lesson we're learning will be beneficial to every one of us in Jesus' name. That's why it's saying in Psalm 2, Psalm 2 reading from verse 10. Psalm 2 verse 10. Here it says, be wise now therefore. You have been at the Bible study today. You've learned, you have heard everything the Lord has taught us. And the Lord is saying, be wise now therefore, O ye kings, O ye men of the earth, be instructed ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord with fear. And rejoice with trembling, kiss the sun. Love the Son, believe the Son, embrace the Son, believe the Lord Jesus Christ, embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and befriend the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, kiss the Son, lest he be angry, he perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, both for a little. Blessed are all they, I am blessed. I said, I am blessed. Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. You have come today to learn, and I pray this thing you have learned today will contribute your spiritual progress in Jesus' name. You love the Lord today, love Him more. You trust the Lord today, trust Him more. You fear the Lord today, fear Him more. You obey the Lord today, obey Him more. You are keeping to integrity today, keep to that integrity more. You are serving the Lord today, serve Him more. And every day of your life, every moment of your life, you are perfecting holiness and moving on holiness in the fear of the Lord. And by the grace of God, when the trumpet sounds, we shall be together in glory. Shall we rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, we thank you for what we have learned today. See what the Lord has taught us, that now we understand that we have the grace of God, but we also serve him with godly fear. And now we're sanctified, he must put his fear within our hearts. He has filled us with the Holy Ghost. He must also put his fear in our hearts, that we love the Lord, we fear the Lord, and we want to obey him all the days of our lives. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord himself will make what we have learned today. To be of tremendous benefit in your life. And remember, the reason why we're learning, there are many people that learn and they remain ever the same. They're not increasing in holiness. And they're not perfecting holiness. 
And the same corruption that was in them yesterday is still there today. And they're ever learning, ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Don't let that be your Lord. Learn and grow. Learn and improve. Learn and increase. Learn and be steadfast. Learn and be stable. Learn and grow in the things of the Lord. Let the grace of God be your life. We're receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace and more grace. Let us have grace and greater grace. Let us have grace and deeper grace. Let us have grace and all sufficient grace whereby we'll be able to serve the Lord with reverence and with godly fear. You don't fear man, you don't fear Satan, you don't fear sickness, you don't fear calamity, you don't fear circumstances, but you fear the Lord. You fear the Lord. Tell the Lord, unite my heart to fear your name. Help me, Lord, to have a healthy fear, a saintly fear, a sanctified fear, a scriptural fear, so that I will serve you, I will worship you, I will honor you, I will obey you. Serve the Lord, fear the Lord. Serve the Lord, fear the Lord. Obey the Lord. What commandment has the Lord been giving you? And you have not been taking it to heart. You say, Lord, now I understand. Now I understand. Because I love you, because I fear you, because I honor you, because I want to glorify you. I take those commandments of God to heart from today. Lord, help me. What I've learned today. To learn to fear the Lord. To learn to fear the Lord. To learn to fear the Lord. In the public, in the private, in the family, in the church, in the neighborhood, in the, neighborhood, in the community, in the office, in the marketplace, to learn to fear the Lord. Our neighbors, the people around us, they do not understand what it means to fear the Lord, but we have come to learn. We are not in the same class with them. They are ignorant. We are knowledgeable. They do not know God. We know God. They do not know His word. We know His word. They do not know His demand. We know His commandment. And because we know what they do not know, that's why we're different from who they are. The Lord has given us a very clear explanation, exposition, application of His word. Now it is ours to be obedient unto him, to fear the Lord. Fear the Lord your God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he has told us, we do not fear man, what man may do unto us, but he says, I will command you whom you will fear. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God who after he has killed the body, as the power has the ability to throw the soul into hell fire. He says, I say unto you, fear him. Tell the Lord, put your fear in my heart. Lord, put your fear in my heart. That anywhere I am, I will know that your eyes are watching me. And I will know that you are putting my life in the scales of your balance. Weighing my action, weighing my life, weighing my thoughts, weighing my reactions and responses. Oh Lord, put your fear in me that I will know anywhere I am, you are watching me, what I think, what I feel, what I do, and how I behave. Oh Lord, let me be conscious that you are with me every time. And your fear will make me to walk in righteousness and holiness. Your fear will make me to perfect holiness day by day in the fear of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for your commandment that you made plain, you made clear. And Lord, help me that this clear word of God, I will live by it. That the salvation in me will reflect the honor, the respect, the fear I have for you. 
The sanctification experience you have given me, the opportunity of the Adamic nature, the purifying of my heart, the new covenant you have brought me into, that Lord, the cleansing, purification of the blood of the Lamb in this great second work of divine grace that wrought within me will come with this deeper fear of the Lord. You say you put your fear in them. Put it in me, Lord. Put it in me, Lord. That I'll be conscious of you every time, everywhere. That, Lord, my life will glorify you. My life will honor you. My life will be in obedience to your word. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of the Holy Ghost. For the presence of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost energizing me, empowering me, equipping me for your service. And Lord, I pray, the more I have of the comfort of this comforter from heaven, the more I'll be walking in the fear of the Lord. Conscious, conscious that I carry something precious, precious ointment, so that my vessel will not crack, so that the oil will not pour away, Lord, that I'll be conscious of your presence with me and I will jealously guard and protect that ointment and that unction of the Holy Ghost and the comfort of the Holy Ghost in my life. That I'll be walking every time, day and night in the fear of the Lord. Lord, make me conscious. Make me conscious. Help me, Lord, so I don't live like the people of the world. We we'll just live like animals and the sick, they will die like animals. Lord, make me a real peculiar child of God, a peculiar treasure. Walking, living, moving, acting, responding in the fear of the Lord. And Lord, let the fear of God in me cancel out, destroy every form of the fear of man that brings a snare. Lord, help me to perfect all the components of holiness fully, completely. In a balanced way, perfecting holiness, perfecting humility. Lord, help me by your grace that my humility will not dry up, fade away, will not leak out, will not be empty. Your meekness, your lowliness, your humility will be in me all the time. No proud words, no proud action, no proud disposition, no proud boastful kind of attitude. Perfecting humility. That the meekness and the loneliness of Christ will be seen in me in everything I do. Lord, help me perfecting obedience and the fear of the Lord. That I'll not be careless like the people of the world. I'll not be careless like all these other people that do not have the fear of God in their hearts. Oh Lord, just help me to know who I belong to. That I'm a new creature in Christ. I belong to the Lord as obedient child. Not fashioning myself according to the former laws in my ignorance. But now living a holy life. Obedience, perfecting that obedience in the fear of the Lord. Lord, perfect my love in the fear of the Lord. Loving the unlovable. Loving the children of God. Loving you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. Loving even my enemies because of the Lord. Not because of them. Not because of what they do or what they don't do. But loving them because of you. Perfecting love in the fear of the Lord. Help me, Lord. No grumbling again, no murmuring again, no gossiping again, no oppression again. 
not doing anything evil to anybody. Oh Lord, help my integrity to stand firm until the glorious day. Now whatever winds may blow, whatever circumstances may bring, Lord, help me. I'll be standing like that capital I, unmovable, because I know you are with me, perfecting integrity in the fear of God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to stand firm, courageous, bold, steadfast to the very edge. Not to fear what man may do unto me. In my office, help my integrity. Carrying out my responsibility, help my integrity. In the midst of the slander, help my integrity. In the midst of lying against me, help my integrity. In the midst of fighting against me, help my integrity. In the midst of people trying to pull you down, tell the Lord, help your integrity to help your integrity. That you will stand, you will not bend to the wishes of the people, but you will stand, stand, stand like that capital I. Improving, increasing, being firm in that integrity. That no matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter how they act, no matter the circumstance, you'll be standing firm, uncompromising in the way of the Lord. Perfecting integrity in the fear of the Lord. That the new nature in you be shining brighter and brighter, perfecting the new nature. Let the old nature die. Let the old nature be buried. Let the old nature wither. Let the old nature be taken away, thrown away. And let the new nature take preeminence and precedence in your life. Perfecting that new nature in the fear of the Lord. Perfecting endurance. No more complaining. No more fear. The ability to bear pain. The ability to bear insults. The ability to bear all the ridicules and the slander and the reproach of men. The ability to stand. Even in the midst of the slander and the persecution, enduring everything until the very edge, perfecting endurance in the fear of the Lord, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord, perfecting submission. No more defending yourself, no more.